Hello everyone, welcome to In 5 Minutes. In this video clip, we'll discuss one question in which we have to find out the potential difference between the two points. So the question goes something like this, determine the potential difference VAB for the given network and A and B are the two points marked in this particular network. We have to find out the potential difference between the two points. Now we have to remember that to find potential difference between any two points, you have to first define that particular potential difference. For example, here it is being called VAB because VAB and VBA both will be different from each other. So once we have defined the potential difference, then how do you find that particular potential? VAB is nothing but VA minus BB. So one, one way to calculate VAB will be first calculate VA, which is voltage at point A. And when you talk about a point voltage, it is always with respect to ground point. So find out voltage as point A with respect to ground, find out voltage at point B with respect to ground, that means VA and VB, and then subtract the two values, you get the potential difference between points A and B, VAB. Or another approach will be to find any potential difference, for example, VAB in this case, start from the second point, which is point B, and travel up to point A, and collect all the voltages that you come across or in other words add up all the voltages that you come across so starting from point b travel up to point a and add all the voltages so this is something we are going to use in this particular question also so if you carefully observe if i start from point b and if i want to travel up to point a there is only one path available and because I'm going to add up all the voltages, please note that you can't travel through a path that consists of current source because you can't directly define the voltage across current source. Anyways, in this case, we don't have multiple options available. There's only one path that will take us from point B to point A and that path obviously does not contain any current source right now. So I'll start from point B and go through all these components and reach to point A. So how many voltages I'll have to consider? Voltage across 5 ohm resistance, voltage across 10 ohm resistance, 8 volts which is already a voltage source and voltage across 2 ohm resistance. So my first step will be to get all these voltages. Now to get the voltages across resistors, we will have to find out currents flowing through resistors. So let's do it everyone. First try to get current through 5 ohm resistance and then current through 10 ohm resistance and 2 ohm resistance. So these are the three currents that we have to find out. So let me define current through 5 ohm resistance to be current that flows in downward direction. I'm going to call it I1. It is going to be very simple to find I1 because you can see in this particular, otherwise we would have applied a KVL equation, but there's a current source in this branch current source direction and I1 direction both are exactly same. So I1 is equal to two amperes. So we have got current through five ohm resistance. Next, let us find out current through two ohm resistance. I'm going to define current that flows in downward direction. I'm going to call it I2. Now in the question, you can see there is a short circuit given across this three ohm resistance. And because of the short circuit across the three ohm resistance, the three ohm resistance becomes redundant. That means it will not play any role in deciding voltage and current in this particular circuit. So it is as good as the 3 ohm is not present in the circuit. With that, if I consider this particular mesh, you can see there is only one voltage source 5 volts and one resistance 2 ohm. So if you want, you can apply KVL equation or because there's only one voltage source and one resistance, I can simply use Ohm's law and find out I2. This voltage source will also source the current in upward direction, which will ultimately flow in clockwise direction. That is in downward direction through 2 ohm resistance. And that is also the direction of I2 that we have taken. So I2 will simply be equal to 5 by 2 which is 2.5 amperes. Why this 3 ohms doesn't come into picture? Because of a short circuit. If this short circuit was not given, then we would have taken 3 and 2 in series. The current would have been 5 by 3 plus 2. That will become 1 amperes. But right now, because of that 3 ohm redundant resistance, we get current to be 2.5 amperes. So we have got the two currents. And now the only thing we have to find out is the current through this 10 ohm resistance. 